Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 42 of the Computer Business Marketing Show. Our show today is brought to you by Tech Site Builder. Tech Site Builder is a hosted website builder that allows you to quickly and easily get a clean, professional, and effective website up and running for your IT business. Save time and frustration with Tech Site Builder. Learn more at techsitebuilder.com. On today's episode, we talk about how to make your Google AdWords profitable with Mark Lamberth of Copy That Converts. We'll take you through every step of the process from choosing the right keywords to writing compelling ads to get to setting up a landing page that converts visitors into customers. Lots of great tidbits and useful tips in this one. All that and so much more coming up right now. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Computer Business Marketing Show. If you own or work in an IT services business, this is this this is the place to learn how to get more clients, keep them happy, and grow your revenue. You can watch, download, and or subscribe to all show episodes at computerbusinessmarketing.com. You can also catch our live stream on Facebook every Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern. Just be sure to like the Tech Site Builder Facebook page, select uh, the following tab, and then select See First, so that every time we go live, it'll jump to the top of your news feed and, uh, and you won't miss an episode. All right, guys, I'm excited today to have on the show Mark Lambert. Uh, he runs Copy That Converts, which is a, an AdWords consulting company. And we're going to talk to him about how to make Google AdWords profitable and some of the tips and tricks that you can use to uh, make sure you're getting the most out of the money you're spending on Google AdWords. There's a lot of different angles to take this, and, and uh, this is a hot topic always. So I'm gonna um, I'm looking forward to getting into that <laughs> with Mark. Um, before we do that, though, I just wanted to uh, do the housekeeping as usual. Wanted to remind you guys about ITO Compass. That's IT Owners Compass, which is the uh, big event this year that's happening in Chicago. Uh, that is uh, happening August 24th through the 26th in Chicago, um, and we're holding it at the WeWork. Uh, it's called WeWork Kinsey, and the cool thing, one of the coolest things I think about uh, this this event is that it's being held at a co-working space, so it's it's very comfortable, right? It's not the typical, you know, hotel conference type setting where you've got those really uncomfortable chairs and you don't have tables and it's just rows of chairs and and really impersonal. Uh, it's cool to have it at a at a kind of like a um, a, a co-working space because. Uh, you know, you, you have desks and you have comfortable chairs and you have a kitchen right next to you and, you know, you can go grab coffee really easily and, and there's, you know, nice windows and nice decor and there's private rooms. That's the cool thing about, uh, especially this place, is there's these little private rooms that you can go into if you want to have like a break-off conversation with someone or you want to talk to a vendor or something, um, you can do that. Uh, and so that's kind of why we're excited to have it at a co-working space. But not only is it at a co-working space, but it's in the same building as the hotel that we're partnering with. So it's called the Kinsey Hotel, and it's called WeWork Kinsey, and it's all in this one building. Um, the WeWork is on the top floors, and it occupies like the top five floors of the building. And then the hotel is on the lower floors. So really, you can uh, you know stay at the hotel, walk down the hall, take the elevator up, and you're at the location where we're going to be having the uh, the event so it's really cool very convenient and it's right in downtown chicago like literally right near the water right near um the uh the navy pier and all the stuff you can do in chicago another cool thing that's happening at this event is we're going to have lots of you know great speakers and and, and work groups and labs and breakout sessions but also we're going to have some social events one of those social events is going to be the uh, the boat ride that we have planned for you on saturday evening um, and it's basically when the, when the event uh, ends on Saturday, we filter everyone out and right there near the uh, co-working space is where the boat is going to be. We all go into the boat. It's an architecture tour. So that's something you have to pay big money normally to take. Uh, but that's all part of your, your ITO Compass ticket. We get on the boat. We do an architecture tour. Uh, the vendors will be there. The sponsors will be there. The attendees will be there. So you can mingle with everybody. Our keynote speaker will be on the boat with us. And just to remind you guys, our keynote speaker is Michael Michalowicz. He's the author of mm. books like The Pumpkin Plan, Profit First, Toilet Paper Entrepreneur. 
Um, if you, you know, if you like to read entrepreneur books, you've probably read one of these at least before. Uh, he's a very dynamic speaker, used to be a computer uh, consultant uh, and built his business, sold it for lots of money. And now he's, uh, you know, he talks about entrepreneurship. Uh, so I think that's going to be a great keynote. And we're still putting together the rest of the schedule as far as like who's going to speak and what kind of uh, workshops we're going to have. But uh, it's shaping up to be one awesome event. We're trying to mix, you know, social with learning. And we definitely want to make sure you come away with some action items and make sure you've learned a lot and that you can grow your business. So uh, check out IT Owners Compass. Get help navigating your IT business in Chicago, August 24th through the 26th. Head on over to itocompass.com to get your tickets. Early bird pricing is still in effect, but it's going to go away soon. So definitely grab your tickets uh, while you can. Also just wanted to uh, quickly mention the Computer Business Marketing Newsletter. If you want to get your weekly dose of marketing tips and tricks, go to computerbusinessmarketing.com, fill out the form at the top, and we'll send you that weekly newsletter every, every Wednesday uh, where you can get um, marketing news from around the world. We you know, subscribe to all of the big marketing blogs and, and news sources. So any relevant article that we feel uh, will help you as a computer business owner We'll throw it in that newsletter along with some tips, along with links to the Facebook group and some conversations going on in the Facebook group. And of course, the latest podcast episode. So check that out at computerbusinessmarketing.com. All right. So without further ado, I'd like to, again, welcome my guest, Mark Lamberth. He owns Copy That Converts, which is a, um, it's a PPC AdWords uh, consulting practice where they can help you. Uh, skyrocket your revenue through smart uh, Google AdWords and smart PPC um, and that whole process. You could probably describe the business better than I can, Mark. So uh, mm -hmm. welcome, Mark. How are you doing? Thanks for being a, a guest today. Doing great, Matthew. Thank you so much for having me. You know, I'm very excited to be here. And let me say just quickly, I, I've read all of Michael McCallowitz's books. Uh, nice. They're incredible. And yes. that's amazing that he's speaking at the conference. Uh, makes me <laughs> I'm going to look that up right after we get yeah, off here. Down. Yeah, man. Yeah, I love I'd it. like to have you. Um, <laughs> yeah, and, and I'll speak to you offline because we are actually looking for speakers um, for various parts of the conference. We'd love mm -hmm. to have a, you know, a Google AdWords PPC expert come and talk. So uh, wow. remind me if, if, if I don't remember after this, um, we can uh, talk about that possibility. That'd be awesome. Okay. Great. Um, yeah, uh, that's the cool thing about having a podcast, right? I, <laughs> I've got all these yeah. experts on that I can, uh, that I can work with um, oh, brilliant. In, in future endeavors. So, you know, why don't you go ahead and um, let us know uh, about your history and what brought you to this point where you're running Copy That Converts. And then, of course, you can kind of tell us in better words than I could what you do at Copy That Converts as well. Sure. Yeah, so I've, I'm kind of a serial entrepreneur. I've been involved in business, you know, since, I don't know, right out of high school. My family, a bunch of entrepreneurs. And so we, um, when I kind of was in the college kind of time of my life, I got into real estate and um, really started to focus on the marketing of that. I, I realized early on that for doing the type of work that I was doing, um, marketing was absolutely critical um, to build that business. And we built it very, very quickly. And we started, even at that point, I mean, this was 12, 14 years ago now, um, we were already starting to venture over into um, AdWords and using you know, digital marketing to grow that business. And so that was kind of an early foundation. I mean, that was maybe even further back, maybe 2005 or so. That must have been, when did AdWords start? That must have been right around when it got started. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think, I think they got started right around 2001. Okay. Um, but they really started wow. yeah, hitting their groove around 2004 or five or so. Um, so I always held that with me. I carried that with me, you know, in any other businesses that I was working on, that marketing was absolutely critical. In fact, if I could get the marketing right, it would kind of forgive a number of sins um, and operations. <laughs> not, <laughs> right. not always doing the best job of following up with leads, or, you know, other problems that happen in operations. But I've always been really focused on the marketing. And so we had some different companies. We um, actually started an English language school. We um, did a few different things in real estate. I started a property management company. Um, and then we 
And when you say we, is this a, a business partner? Uh, it was actually my family kind of in the early days. Okay, great. Um, and then here in the last few years, it's been my wife, Haley. Yeah, so we're business partners. We more or less do everything together and work together, and so it works really well. That works great, um, yeah. Yeah. So we, I've done a lot of different forms of marketing over the years. been a lot of direct mail. Um, I mean, we've advertised on TV, radio, um, organic, um, web, you know, work, getting, getting our, um, our site at the top of Google. But what I found is that the most predictable and really the most profitable um, platform that we've ever come across remains to this day to be AdWords. Hmm. Um, not only for you know, the clients that we manage um, spend for, but also for our own companies. So, I mean, we still, still own a couple of other companies. One is a retreat center actually in Mexico. Um, wow. I'm happy to kind of talk about it a little bit. Um, but which again, is also kind of an interesting story with, with AdWords and maybe I'll kind of dive into that. Sure. About five years ago, we were looking at a few different ideas. Um, we were thinking about kind of going back into real estate. Um, we were thinking about creating some information products and we had heard about a concept, um, basically working with some alternative kind of healing modalities, um, that really helps with, um, basically getting past kind of a recovery situation. Um, so like addiction. Hmm. So we had heard about this. We we're curious about it. And we built a website um, for that business without yet having all the infrastructure in place. We built a couple of other sites for completely different businesses. And we literally, I mean, we were kind of at a point in our life where we were looking for our next project and, you know, we weren't, Things weren't too urgent, so we had a little bit of time. And we just tested out a few different, very different ideas than each other. And um, sure enough, we started getting sales, started getting calls, sales with our uh, retreat center. Hmm. And so we started to fold that cash back into the business. Um, we, I mean, we, we went down to Mexico. We spent a few months down there setting everything up. We brought in a team of around seven to eight people. And... So we set up the systems and um, basically got that business running more or less completely passively. Nice. Um, we were just, yeah, we were just doing the AdWords spend or the AdWords management for it. But, um, you know, that business continues to run to this day. We haven't been down to spend any significant amount of time at the center down for probably at least two years now. Um, and we mm-hmm. spent, you know, a couple of hours on it each month working. We've got the team working full time. That's great. And That's, uh, you know, I like the um, I like the idea of like testing out some some ideas, throwing up a website, pointing some Google AdWords at it, and seeing you know what sticks and what what resonates with people. Because I think a, a big problem a lot of entrepreneurs have is they go kind of go all in on on on, on, a, on an idea before they you know know if it's going to work. They just they think you know hey it's a good idea. I think it's going to work. So they like put their life savings into it and they hire employees and then, and then they try to sell it and then they realize yeah. it, doesn't, uh, it doesn't sell. So I like the idea of just, you know, quick website, throw some AdWords at it. If people start, you know, purchase, if you have like a purchase form or something on there, people start purchasing, spending money on it. Hey, then, then go with it. It's great. And I mean, we, we really avoided, I, I think a lot of, you know, possible heartache, um, with the other models that we were also testing out, which didn't work, mm. right? So instead of yeah. going just full force into those and spending hundreds of hours or you know thousands of dollars, um, we were able to test these concepts out for literally you know a hundred, two hundred bucks. Wow! Um, yeah, I think I think that's a great idea. Also, for those listening, um, if the, you know if you want to start a new service, like if you want to include you know um, data recovery, or if you want to you know maybe go into like Macintosh repair, Apple repair, or something like that. Um, you know, instead of guessing if your customers might want it or people might want it, try you know make a landing page and and set up some AdWords. You know, using some of the tips we'll we'll, we'll talk about today, uh, and and see if people would be interested in it. Because you know that's really the only way you can tell is if people are searching for it and then they click and you know they go through and, and actually purchase the service. Um, yeah. I think that's a great way to just kind of test out any, any business idea or service idea. 
It really is. And what's so great about AdWords um, and then analytics, um, you know, Google Analytics, which is the kind of analytics component of you know, looking at your data, what's amazing about it is the data is, is perfectly precise. I mean, it's the, the numbers don't lie. And so we will always um, set up conversion tracking like at every possible level that we can. So we're not only tracking like phone calls into the business or form fills, which are two of the most common. We will also track any type of clicks on the site. Um, we track scroll depth. Um, we track some engagement metrics like time on site, but much more, um, much more than that. It has to actually be the, the sort of engaged tab on the browser. I mean, there's, there's all kinds of, of stuff that you can, kind of put in there to really get a visual of how this idea or how this business is working. Right. Um, and, you know, day to day you can track those conversions and just say, you know, this campaign is working better than this campaign. Or for that matter, you know, these, this business, this early, uh, you know, kind of birth of the business, this one is working better than this one. That's great. Uh, yeah, yeah I, th I think that's, that's a great idea. Um, so let's dig into, um, Let's dig into AdWords a little bit, uh, and then we can circle back around on, on what your business is doing uh, these days. Um, but I want to I dig into uh, kind of a scenario for, for my listeners. So, you know, let's say um, there's a, you know, a guy who owns a computer repair shop somewhere in the middle of the country, and, you know, you get those like AdWords coupons or whatever, or maybe he has, you know, he saved up a little bit of marketing money, like 300 to 500 bucks or something. So he has a, a little bit of money. Um, he does computer repair locally, uh, and he's never done AdWords before, and he wants to get started. What what would you say is the kind of the best way to approach starting with Google AdWords? Well, you can set up a free account with AdWords. Um, there are the coupons that come often when you start new hosting for a site, or there's a lot of these coupons around for you know seventy five to one hundred fifty dollars. AdWords is it's, it's it is involved. Um, it can absolutely be learned. We found that it's, it's really around 15 to 20 hours, kind of minimum, that it takes to learn it yourself. Mm. Um, and I mean, you can go on and you know, spend a lifetime. I mean, it's, it's, there's a lot in there. But really, to do it yourself, I think that it really takes around 20 hours to, to kind of get a feel for the landscape. And what I would recommend is that people go to udemy.com, uh, U-D-E-M-Y. Um, they've got a lot of really great AdWords courses, and they're just super cheap. I mean, they're ten to fifteen dollars, um, and it's a really great, like video course, very well produced. Um, there's one by Isaac Rudansky um, that is fantastic. It's, it's a little bit longer program; it's about seventeen hours. Um, but you know, there's ten to fifteen different programs in there, from an hour or two all the way up to very advanced. And then it's important not to use. <laughs> the the well first of all not to use AdWords Express which is the the kind of rollout sort of do it yourself very um, very few features um, kind of like a simplistic version yeah the simplistic version of AdWords the reason why you really don't want to use that is because that's all optimized for Google's settings I mean Google doesn't give you the functionality to change your settings with AdWords Express right and those settings are all set for Google to make the most money that they can. <laughs> um, if you go with the settings that the sort of auto settings that Google sets up, whether it be an AdWords Express or even a full AdWords account, um, it typically will not be profitable. There are a number of little tweaks and changes you need to make, which aren't that difficult and which can definitely be done. Um, but you know, the the real profitability of AdWords comes once you start to get into the account to add. Um, some negative keywords and to really kind of work on your ads a little bit and get it tweaked. Yeah, it sounds like maybe AdWords Express, you know, might be a good introduction to the platform, but you, you can't really get past a certain level um, without having those customizations that you need with the, the full version. Yeah, that's right. And I mean, again, with, you know, you know 15, 20 hours, as little as 10 um, you would learn what all those settings are. I mean, you would skip right past AdWords Express and move into the full AdWords platform. Right. But you'd learn what those um, what those changes are and what the functionality is, the way that you want to set it up so that you're not wasting money you know, right out of the gate. 
Now, would you typically concentrate on uh, one service like, you know, virus removal or, or computer repair and then try to kind of optimize for that particular service and those keywords? Or would you try to just kind of broadly go for everything and, and see which one performs the best of all of your different services? That's a really good question. Um, <clears throat> typically, some you know, AdWords is driven by keywords. And so someone types in keywords, that triggers a you know, very complex algorithm that Google runs. They look at quality score. But to determine the placement of the ads at the top of the page, um, <clears throat> you want to make sure that when you start your AdWords campaign, that you start it strong. And so typically, we will focus on just a few keywords at the beginning, the ones that, we, that are right at the heart of um, you know, a niche, or right at the heart of a business service, mm -hmm. that you know that if people are contacting you about that, that that's, a, that's your sweet spot. That's exactly what you're looking for. You can absolutely fulfill those orders you know, perfectly. That is a really good place to start and to optimize that keyword spend, you know, maybe it's just five or 10 keywords, but to optimize those, what happens then is Google sees your account and it starts to see that, okay, these guys actually are getting traffic and they know what to do with it. They'll come analyze your website. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's all happens, you know, automated, but they analyze the website and they analyze your quality score. But typically we will start with what we know will work really well and then we'll expand from there. So Google looks at what happens after the person clicks on the ad, what happens on the website, and they use that to determine how, uh, how they're going to show the ad or what, what order they're going to show it or whatever on, on the search results. Yeah. Okay. That's, That's exactly right. Because yeah. you know, Google, their objective is to keep people coming back and using the search engine. Right? And when people do that, they make money from AdWords. Um, but it's very, very important to them that, that the results on that page are truly what the searcher was looking for. Um, you know, their, right. their big uh, you know, innovation was, was being able to just hone in on that so well. They had the most accurate results. That's how they beat out all the other search engines. Well, not only is that for the organic results at the bottom of the page, it's also that way for, I mean, they, they also want high quality results at the top of the page too. Yeah. So they will look at your, I mean, they will come along and analyze your whole landing page, your whole site for that matter. But they'll analyze the landing page, the keywords that you're bidding on, and the ad that connects the two. And they want all of that to be totally congruent. Hmm. Um, yeah. So if Makes you know, someone comes along and types in, um, you know, you know, iPhone, uh, uh, you know, screen repair, you know, iPhone screen repair, Madison, Wisconsin, they want to make sure that someone clicks on that ad when they go to that landing page, that it is going to serve up those results and, and be very targeted for them. Right. They don't want people to click on that ad and then bounce back to Google. So they will not only look at the page and look at the, the text on it and the ads that are running to it, but they also look at, and this is something they're really starting to do here the last couple of years. They look at how someone engages with that page. Hmm. So, you know, part of the reason why they invented Chrome was to be able to analyze the user behavior within a web browser. Um, because, you know, people were using Firefox and the different things before that. Well, because they have Chrome, I mean, they can analyze everything to, to a complete extreme degree. So, uh, you know, when you go to that uh, landing page about iPhone, you know, repair in Madison, um, the assumption is that if it's actually what you're looking for, you're going to go down, you're going to read it, you're going to engage with it, click around the site some. And when they see that, when Google sees that that's how someone is engaging with your landing page, they reward you with a higher quality score, which lowers the cost of advertising with Google. Nice. Yeah, so that's kind of how that all ties together. And it's why, you know, some companies and why we are definitely moving towards, you know, have been the last year or so towards, um, really looking at the landing page and conversion rate optimization piece. Because right. we know that Google is also looking at that. And that, Interesting. you know, ads, you know, back, back when AdWords started and, you know, the first maybe 10 years, people were very, very commonly sending web traffic to their homepage of their site. Well, the homepage, it's very distracting. It's very general. Um, it's got all kinds of information on it. It's almost impossible that it could be truly relevant 
to that searcher unless they're searching for something very general. Right. Um, but people typically, you know, search for something specific. And so, you know, a landing page is really the only thing that can create the level of specificity that we want. Um, so for each campaign and for each ad, we're always going to have um, dedicated landing pages and we're going to continue to work on conversion rate optimization to get those users to take, you know, the actions that we want. So what, what have you found um, makes for a good landing page? Like what are some kind of common components that you're looking for in, in, a, in a good landing page that converts well? Yeah. Well, we, we want it to not be distracting. Um, we want it to have at most two calls to action, typically only one. But we will usually have the phone number because a business owner typically wants phone numbers more than anything else. Um, do you normally we, use like um, unique phone numbers? We do, yeah. So if we have eight different landing pages on a website, we will set up a unique phone number on each one um, and track that all the way from the keyword through the ad um, to the engagement on the site you know, with that phone number. We, um, let's see, in terms of landing page design, I mean, it's important that it be very, very simple. Very, very simple. We've started to experiment now with putting more copy on landing pages, and we are seeing that people respond to that very well. So, I mean, we may have, I mean, it's kind of un unorthodox, but yeah. um, we've seen that adding, you know, 600 to 1,000 words of really targeted copy is just awesome. That hmm. people will scroll deeper. Um, and then I bet Google likes that because they see that the person's engaged and staying on the page longer. They do. Yeah, and they also read the copy themselves. And so they, you know, I mean, Google goes in and reads the copy. So, yeah, they love it. Um, we like to make it uh, kind of graphically rich. And so we'll have, you know, photos. Um, how about videos? How, how do those do on these landing pages? They do well, especially if it's a more complicated offer that takes a little bit more explaining. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, so maybe like a financial product. Um, or one that maybe needs more trust. And so, you know, some like a financial product. So some businesses are more like that. And it's very helpful to be able to see the business owner, you know, or representative they're talking and kind of build that trust as well. Um, and then we've also started to experiment <laughs> with ugly landing pages. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, and it's, it's funny. I mean, it's counterintuitive, you know, business owners, they, they really struggle with that. Um, but it's fascinating, especially for more kind of local service businesses, um, you know, plumbers and this type of thing. Hmm. You know, we've tested a slick landing page right next to a more homegrown landing page. And oftentimes a homegrown landing page will actually convert better. Um, Interesting. It just, yeah, it, it looks more like the, basically the plumber. I think there's something about the, uh, you know, the plumber's, you know, brother building the website. <laughs> Yeah, and the look of that, which just feels more organic and local, and people really gravitate towards that. Yeah, and sometimes you'll feel like it. It, it might feel cold or corporate or maybe too expensive, uh, and that can turn off people as well. I, I think. Yeah, and absolutely stay away from stock photos. You know, I mean, I, I think this is pretty common knowledge now, but you know, the web is is just filled with stock photos, and we have that really blink level response to that. I mean, we can see that immediately. Hmm. Um, so, so what would be a good photo, like a photo of the business owner or? What? We like to send a photographer over to uh, the business owner, um, hmm. to the business location and get some really good photos. And some of them also not being all set up and perfect. Um, some of them being more kind of B-roll um, <laughs> or, or those, you know, sort of casual photos or, right. you know, not the, the kind of hero images, so to speak. Um, cool. And um, going back to phone numbers, Dave Greenbaum in the uh, in the chat asked about um, where how do you generate those phone numbers? I guess there's Google supplies their own tracking phone numbers for the ads. Are those fine, or do you use like some kind of third party service for that? We will. We have used Google um, Google's phone numbers in the past um, quite a bit. We typically these days will use CallRail. Um, so that's just like it sounds. CallRail.com. They are a um, kind of a telephony company and they supply phone numbers and also have got really a really great kind of back-end system where you can um, oh, kind of trigger all kinds of things to happen when those phone calls come in um, as well as, oh, nice. you know, whole phone tree system. And of course, the phone number gets forwarded 
I mean, if you set it up this way, it gets forwarded directly to the business owner. And so, you know, it's essentially like someone calling them directly. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's cool. Um, all, all these links or all these resources we're talking about, I'll be sure to put in the show notes, links in the show right. notes, uh, computerbusinessmarketing.com if you guys want to check those out. Um, we had some questions before the show started that I wanted to make sure to ask you as well uh, during the pre-show. Uh, if you guys aren't listening to this live, if you're listening to the recording, definitely try to catch it live on Facebook because uh, we give you an opportunity before the show starts to ask questions and um, you know, if you have any, any specific questions about the topic we're going to talk about, that's a good chance to, uh, to get your, your questions asked. Um, so uh, one question was, um, you know, uh, say you show at the top of the search results because you have good SEO on your website. Um, is that enough? Or, you know, why, why would you want to also consider Google AdWords um, as well as good SEO? Yeah, it's a great question. I think, I think Dave asked that question. I wrote that down. Um, <clears throat> having great SEO is, is fantastic. And it's, you know, it takes a lot of work. And there's been a misconception over time that it's, you know, free traffic. Well, it's typically not free. Um, you know, you have to build a lot of good content and build a nice site. There have been a lot of studies done that um, seeing a business's name twice on a search results page has got a significant uptick in traffic. Um, far, far better than if only the organic were there or only the AdWords were there. Huh. Um, you know, it's just that, that kind of branding level um, situation where, you know, someone sees that, you know, they, they go to the page and they see your ad first. It's at the top of the page. But when they scroll down and they see you again, oftentimes what they'll do is they'll scroll down, they'll see you again, they'll scroll back up to see if indeed that it's the same. Huh. Um, and they'll go down and if, if you're the only result on that page that has got an ad at the top and organic result at the bottom, um, oftentimes, you know, you're just in, they click right into it. That's a good point. You know, I never even thought about that. So you should really kind of concentrate on both and try to, to get your site at the top of both. And, and that makes sense. And I think it kind of goes hand in hand too, because if you spend the time to make your website, um, you know, uh, good in the eyes of Google, then they'll probably also have a better chance of uh, favoring it in, in AdWords as well. I'm, I'm sure they use kind of some of the similar uh, ranking factors. You know, that's exactly right. And it's, it's great that you, uh, you know, your, your understanding of all this, it's <clears throat> AdWords is a perfect testing environment to work on your SEO. Hmm. Um, Click through rates, um, conversion rates, you know, basically testing different ad copy. You know, the ad copy that you put into um, AdWords, I mean, the headline and the description that you write, that's basically the page title and meta description down in the organic results. Right? I mean, they, they look basically the exact same. They're presented the same. Right. Um, and the way there's been a lot of studying now, uh, you know, Larry Kim, I, who, who was the founder of WordStream, huge AdWords uh, management firm, um, I saw him on stage recently talking about the fact that um, the that Google had that basically AdWords was a perfect and testing environment for SEO. And if you want to do SEO and actually appear in those organic results, a great place to start is actually with AdWords to test out copy and keywords and all, all of that. Yeah, because uh, you get immediate results on how effective the keywords and the and the offer and the you know how you phrase it will perform. Whereas in SEO, you know, you put it out there and then you got to wait for Google to crawl it and then you got to wait for, you know, whatever to happen. And it takes a while. So I, I like the immediacy yeah. of AdWords. It really is great for that. And I mean, we, we love both. We don't do as much SEO these days. I've, I've done a lot of that in the past. Um, but I mean, we certainly appreciate both. But yeah, um, you know, I think they're, they're kind of two sides of the same coin and it's great to focus on both. Um, another question we had uh, was about brand names. So uh, especially this happens a lot in computer repair because, you know, we repair uh, other brands' uh, equipment. Um, so are we allowed to use like brand names like Apple or Microsoft or Windows or those types of things in the Google AdWords copy? Not always. 
um, they're, they're kind of finicky about that. And so, yeah, I mean, you can test out, you can test it out you can see, um, you know, what happens. I mean, they'll approve the ad or not. They'll, they'll show you that it's approved or it's not approved. And they'll show you why. And what you can do is, um, you know, ask for a review. Um, so if you, you know, if your ad gets flagged, they won't let it run. <clears throat> you can call Google and literally talk to a representative and say, I'm trying to run AdWords over here for the AdWords side of their business. They've got great support. Uh, of course <laughs> um, yeah you try to learn some things about SEO from the, you know there's nobody you can call about that yeah but um, AdWords is awesome they've got dedicated support people you know all day long yeah, and I've heard they'll get into your account and kind of show you what to do and guide you through the process and everything yeah that's exactly right and so yeah you can ask for a manual review and um, they may be able to give you some tips on you know exactly how that would be able to go through cool um, let's see we've got some other uh, chats here. Uh, Brian in the chat says, uh, in marketing, authenticity is a key often overlooked feature. Consumers have their own authenticity algorithm for choosing businesses in Google to contact. That is why sometimes being too slick and overproduced is not good for business. And I think, yeah, I think he's, he's kind of reiterating our point about, you know, maybe try out an ugly landing page. Maybe try not to be, you know, use too much marketing speak in your copy. Um, and, uh, and, and, you know, just talk to people like you'd, you'd be talking to them regularly. And I think maybe you can connect better, especially with local businesses. That's exactly right. You know, website templates and themes um, and video production and, and photography, all of this has gotten so high quality and so slick that we're very, um, very used to seeing, you know, just perfect landscape photos on websites and, um, you know, perfect hero shots and perfect product shots. But when we're marketing, we're really trying to get people's attention. And we, you know, we're, we're in a world where, the, you know, of course, there's more and more distraction. You know, it's, it's just skyrocketing. So how do we actually get their attention? And when things have just gotten more and more slick and more and more, you know, kind of processed and like perfect, then going the other direction can be a really interesting counterintuitive move. Um, yeah. It's, and just would, would, it quickly. Yeah. Would maybe one thing you could do is like, for example, if there's a specific keyword you're targeting, go to Google, type in that keyword and see what the, the top ad results are. And then would it maybe make sense to try to be a little bit different than that? Or if you're looking at those top ad results, is that telling you maybe that's what's working and I want to be similar to that? How, how would that comparison go? Yeah. Positioning is really, really important. Um, more important than ever because there's more players in the market at every level. Um, so whatever, you know, if it's an IT, you know, the work that you guys are doing, I mean, all the businesses that we work with, they're all having more and more competition. So a positioning statement, a unique selling proposition, I mean, it's really important, right? I mean, you know, uh, what, you know, Trout and Reese wrote uh, positioning maybe 20 years, 25 years ago now. It was important then. It's really important now. And, but I've actually found that it's not that hard. I mean, to go in and um, just to look at what's happening out there, oftentimes you will see a lot of kind of imitators in the marketplace and they're kind of grouped over here. Yep. And to look at that and say, what can we do that's just different than them? Yep. And, you know, tackle that little corner of the market. And, you know, when you're looking down at ads, add one, add two, and then add three, it's got just something unique or interesting. And, even sometimes the ad copy will just kind of almost make some, we'll kind of mess around with it and make it kind of sound a little funny sometimes or just be interesting or distinct. Um, sometimes we can insert some unique characters into the ad copy, but something to, to create that kind of inflection of attention. Um, so, so Do you yeah. have like um, some specific examples like does, you know, um, uppercase letters work or exclamation marks and and you know I know you probably can't get too crazy with that stuff or Google won't approve it but are there you know some kind of techniques that seem to work better than others as far as the copy itself and making you know catching people's eye and that kind of thing yeah well there's certainly I mean we will capitalize every um, every word you know the first letter of every word um, in the ad which is something that um, a lot of people um, still to this day really aren't doing hmm. ideally we love to see a website that doesn't have the triple w at the beginning 
Um, oh. So, you know, copy that converts.com is our site. There's no triple W at the beginning. And so that kind of compresses and makes it more clear and able to see exactly what the URL is. Right. Um, there are a lot of extensions that you can add to a Google AdWords ad now. Um, there's like 12 or 14 different types of extensions. So there's a phone number extension, a location extension, um, where you, you actually hook your AdWords account to your Google My Business page. Right. And it will port your address in and, and actually kind of automatically show your address on the ad. Someone can see that, oh, wow, these guys are close to me. Nice. Click on that and go right to a, to a map. So one thing that's important with um, setting up the account right is to use every possible extension that you can. Um, mm -hmm. It will give you a lot more real estate on the page. That makes sense. And then um, <clears throat> we've also started to... Um, to kind of learn a little bit about um, having some different um, keyboard settings, which adds a few extra uh, characters into the keyboard. Um, so got to learn a little bit more about that, but I was just hearing about that recently in a conference, and I think cool. we're going to start testing that out as well. So you mean like, like extra characters in the, in the, in the name? Or well, when you, set up your, when you set up your keyboard differently on a Mac, um, there is a setting where you can, um, I think it's like an international keyboard setting where it actually introduces some new um, characters to the keyboard. Ah, uh, okay. You can often slip in a few of those. I mean, <laughs> Interesting. You, you got to kind of be careful with it, but you can slip yeah. in a few of those and yeah, <laughs> yeah, it looks distinctly different for sure. That's cool. And again, this is all stuff you can experiment with and try it out and see if it works. You know, I think that's the fun thing about stuff like this is um, to, to try different things and try out outside of the box things. And again, with Google AdWords, it's like you get immediate feedback. If it's, if it works, you'll see the clicks come in. If it doesn't work, you know, um, it, it won't work. And so, uh, do you have any other tips? Just, uh, we're going to wrap up here pretty soon, but any other just kind of quick tips about, um, you know, about the topic, which is how to make AdWords profitable. So any other things before we leave that we haven't touched on yet? Sure. Um, <clears throat> So a few things, I wrote down a few things here. I'm looking at my list. One is to use what are called single keyword ad groups, um, sometimes referred to as SCAGs. But without getting too deep into the um, kind of functionality of AdWords, maybe your listeners could just write down single keyword ad groups. <laughs> and if you go to, to set up your campaign, um, you could look, a little bit, look that up a little bit and, and, and learn what's going on there. But basically what that does is when you set up single keyword ad groups, it takes the granularity of your ad groups um, down to the, the smallest possible um, sort of unit, almost like the atomic level, if you will, of a keyword. Basically, you're saying, only if someone types in exactly this keyword do I want my ad to run. Right. Um, otherwise, if you, if you kind of leave it broad or open, Google will have a lot of creative interpretation, and they will run your ads for all kinds of things that you weren't looking for. Yep. Um, and it ends up costing more. So setting up single keyword ad groups is key. And then, you know, there's a lot of things, but um, one is to split test ad copy. So to A-B test. Um, you know, AdWords and analytics are so precise with their metrics that you can um, test everything just to the, to the fullest extent possible. And there's a lot of software now um, that makes it very, very easy to do that. And so we found that our idea about what's going to work is, um, you know, about as uh, accurate as a monkey throwing a dart at a dartboard, you know, <laughs> blindfolded. <laughs> so we are adamant about split testing everything, the landing pages, the ad copy, the keywords. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of information on the web about how to do that. It can be done very simply. Um, and I guess one just a little quick tip if you want to just split test things quickly would be to set up an ad, to duplicate it, to make a copy of it, and then just change the headline. Just change the headline of the ad. Right. And you can just keep doing those. You can just have different headlines for 10 different ads. And one of them is going to emerge as the winner. Um, and nine of them are going to emerge as losers, right? Right. Yeah. Yep. And then you can probably do something similar with the landing pages as well. Absolutely. Yeah, we'll split test uh, headlines on landing pages. Um, you know, the, the ugly landing pages versus the nice ones. Um, we'll test those. 
we've got, you know, we work with Unbounce, um, which is a landing page testing, kind of creation and testing platform. And it's got awesome um, metrics about how your landing pages are doing. So, you know, every week we'll get in and um, change up some landing pages, throw those up and see how those do. You know, we'll, we'll see which one's the winner. And then that'll be the new uh, champion, it's called. And then we'll create a new challenger for that champion. And we'll just keep split testing things. Cool. Yeah. yeah. I, I, that's that's the beauty of the technology we have these days is we have that luxury. You know, before you'd, you'd put an ad in a newspaper or you'd put up a billboard and you'd be stuck with that ad. It would be oh, super man. expensive to change it. Uh, but these days, you know, you, you have that luxury of being able to, to change things up. And you'll find, um, I, I found that something that worked, you know, last year or two years ago doesn't work anymore because maybe people get, you know, used to it or maybe, you know, trends change. Um, so it's something you always got to stay on top of and always be tweaking and and um, and being able to test different stuff all the time is good. So even if something works well now, next time you run it, do another test because it might not work as well the next time. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, I did a lot of billboard advertising and direct mail and all of that back in the day. And, and <laughs> advertising I can see with, why you settled on AdWords. <laughs> yeah, yeah. These metrics are unbe- unbeatable. It's great. Cool. We got to wrap up. So really quick, just let folks know where they can find you and uh, just give us a quick rundown of what you do over at Copy That Converts. Sure. Yeah. So we help companies uh, manage their AdWords spend. Um, We do everything. You know, uh, a company can get in touch with us and we'll kind of talk through the process. If they're currently running AdWords, we'll do a free audit of their account. Um, and just see what's possible. You know, if there's some improvements to be made, if there's not, if it's already running really well, then we would tell someone that. We'd say, you know, this is great. I think that who's running it for you now is doing a great job. You should stay with them. But we found that we can typically, in around 70% of campaigns that we've audited, we found that we're able to make significant improvements in that. Um, and so then, yeah, we, we will set up an AdWords campaign and we will help a company manage that um, over time. And you know, stay deeply connected with them. And we, we typically will do a meeting every week or every two weeks. Um, we will usually send a video over of how the whole campaign is doing as well as some really good reports. Um, nice. Yeah, so that's what we do. And our website is copythatconverts.com. Cool. Yeah, guys, uh, check out um, check out Copy That Converts, especially I know as computer guys we and gals, we like to kind of get our hands dirty and do things ourselves, but we also got to realize that there's only so much time in the day and there's only so much knowledge that we can soak up to be able to do this stuff right. And sometimes you got to turn to the experts for this stuff. Um, that's what we do with Tech Site Builder, you know, help you get a website up. That's what you can do with folks like uh, Mark with Copy That Converts to help you really hone in on what makes a good ad, including those landing pages. There's a lot of work, right? You got the copy for the ad. You got to pick the keywords. You got to build the landing page. You got to test the landing page. Yeah. <laughs> yada, yada, yada. So yeah, you guys got computer businesses to run. So awesome. Um, thanks Mark. Uh, great stuff. And you know, we'll keep in, keep in touch cause this is always a, a hot topic and we might have you back in the future. Um, you said you, you, you're thinking about starting your own podcast, so let us know when that, that rolls out, and I'll, I'll be sure to give you a shout-out here as well. Awesome, Matthew. Thank you so much. It's, it's been a great time. I really appreciate it. All right. Thank you. And uh, thank you guys for listening, especially those who were in the live show. Don't forget to join us in the Facebook group. We have a Facebook group. It's called the Computer Business Marketing Group. You can go to techsitebuilder.com slash Facebook. I'm sorry, techsitebuilder.com slash group. And that'll take you to the Facebook group. Uh, And um, Mark, you could join us there. Uh, We have computer business owners and we have marketing experts who can answer your questions and help you out. Um, It's a great place to to get your questions answered. Also, if you listen to this podcast on iTunes or Stitcher, I would love to get a review. Let us know what you think about it. Leave, you know, however many stars you want. Leave us a review. Every review you leave helps us get found by those platforms. And then the more people who listen to the show, the more guests we can bring on and the the better it becomes. So definitely uh, love hearing from you guys that way. Finally, don't forget to uh, check out ITO Compass at itocompass.com and Tech Site Builder at techsitebuilder.com. Thanks for checking out the Computer Business Marketing Show. My name is Matthew Rodella saying, here's to your success. Mm